Hello and welcome to the show. This week I thought we'd have a look at some simulation software that's available on the iPad to simulate some of your circuits rather than actually be at the bench and build them. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at the software, uh, see how it actually works and how you can actually get some benefit from it. And then we'll get to the actual workbench and try and simulate uh, really what we've actually done with the simulation software and see whether or not we get the same results. Okay, so the simulation software that I've settled on for the iPad is called iCircuit. Let's just open up and have a look. Alright, so what you end up with is a uh, matrix style grid pattern, which is your workspace. Now, down the uh, bottom here, you've got a plus sign, which opens up all of the tools, and I'll go through those in a moment. You have a, a pencil, which actually draws wires, so just a, your basic just wire connecting parts together, your oscilloscope, and a multimeter. Uh, and you can configure uh, some of the options uh, through the circuit settings and other bits and pieces just uh, with the uh, settings button down the bottom right hand corner. But this is quite nice to use and I found this very intuitive. So if we have a look at the software now, uh, I'll open up the parts and I'll start with something simple like a DC source. So you simply grab that and drag that onto your workspace. And in this case, it's a five volt source. And I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm going to grab a resistor, which is simply over here. And you just simply scroll um, left and right with all of your parts. You can select everything, or you can simply go to sources, which will only give you uh, power sources or sources for signal, silicon, which has all of the LEDs, some MOSFETs and other parts in there. Digital, so AND gates, NOR gates, flips, um, some DACs and so on. And your analog components, your resistors, your capacitors, and so on. It's quite comprehensive. It doesn't have absolutely everything, but for simulating some simple circuits, this is not bad. So if I use my five volt power supply there, I'll drag a resistor up onto the screen and I want the resistor connecting to the 5 volt and I'll drag it over here. So I have a 1K resistor and I can simply just double tap on that to set a higher value or a significantly lesser value. 100 ohms that'll do. I'll turn off the multimeter. And down this end I'll actually put uh, an LED. Okay, so if we head over to silicon, there's a simple LED, drag that, and that'll do, and obviously just to complete uh, a circuit, if, is if you were laying this out on a breadboard, uh, you need to pull certain things down to, uh, down to ground, so I'll pull the LED down to ground, and the 5 volt power supply down to ground. Now, as you can see there, you get a lovely little animation of the flow of electrons. So. The beauty of this software, one, you can see that your circuit works, two, you've got a very large, simple range of components to be able to pull together uh, and, and simulate. Um, very, very easy configuration, All right, back up to 1K, down to 100 ohms. This is also uh, really quite um, sophisticated in, in certain ways. You will see that the LED is quite red, and that means that it is very bright. If you have a look at the multimeter, um, there's 30 milliamps at 1.8 volts going through that LED uh, from a 5 volt supply, which is meaning that it is getting quite a decent amount of current and it's producing a nice bright light. If we have a look at the multi uh, resistor, uh, you can see the 3 volts going through the resistor and again 31 milliamps or so. Change the voltage of the resistor and obviously you get a significant difference in the LED, but graphically or visually, this is quite red at the moment. If we change the resistor to a 1K, you can see that that LED has visually dimmed on the disc on the screen. It's now just a, a slight pinkish hue rather than a strong red, giving you a visual indication that that LED is not putting out much brightness anymore. And if you have a look in your multimeter, it's getting three milliamps at 1.7 volts. So that's what the software is simulating. If we put 5 volts through a 1K resistor to an LED, 
we'll get 3.2 milliamps and 1.7 volts going into that LED and it won't be producing much brightness. So if we again simply modify the value of the resistor and I'll come down to 500k, uh, 500 ohms, it's not as bright red as it was before, but it is significantly brighter. Uh, again, a nice visual representation of what's actually happening in your circuit. So if I leave the 5 volt power supply and leave the 500 ohm resistor, but I don't want this LED, I can just get rid of that. I'll leave my ground, I might use that. And I will use a DC motor. And there we go, the DC motor is available for use. Pull the DC motor up into the circuit and just to be correct I will pull that down to ground. So we have a DC motor and you can see uh, the animation. That motor is actually spinning and when you leave your meter turned on, this is your meter, and have a look at the DC motor characteristics, you actually get to see uh, quite a deal of what's going on including the RPMs uh, of the motor, uh, the amperage draw, torque and so on, voltage and again if you have a look at your characteristics there through going through the DC motor and you modify your resistor, we'll drop that to 50, the motor is spinning considerably quicker visually now and as you can see it's doing a hundred RPM as opposed to a minute ago 24 RPM. So a great representation. But if we leave, uh, and there is a lot more that you can do with this software, obviously uh, experiment for yourself, but this is definitely the best one I've come across so far for simulation. Um, what we will do here is, I'll get rid of this, I will put the LED back in, So we have our LED and there's the characteristics of our LED, uh, 6 milliamps, 1.7 volts from a 5 volt supply going through that LED at the moment. Now if I change this, I think I've got some 270s. If I have a look at this now, I'm getting 11 milliamps going through the LED um, at 1.8 volts. You can actually turn this on in your scope. Unfortunately, this uh, scope arrangement's only looking at that LED, so it's not really going to be sh showing you any particular waves. All right, and you can also look at other components of your circuit in a type of scope, but again, not much to see here at the moment. Turn the scope off. So this uh, LED, 1.8 volts, 11 milliamps. Now, if, if I replicate this circuit uh, physically using a breadboard, my big old breadboard. Uh, I'll put the multimeter on here and actually get. Okay, I have my power supply turned on and set to 5 volts. So we'll just check that we're getting 5 volts on the multimeter. Okay, so 5.16 volts, that's close enough. So I'll hook that up to the power rail on the breadboard. Okay, there we go. So we've got um, suitable 5 volts going to the positive and negative power rail on the breadboard. All right, I have here a resistor. I think I used 270 or 280 uh, on the uh, eye circuit example. I'll just double check the resistance of this one. I am pretty certain. Yep, so 270. 270 ohms on this resistor. That will be definitely close enough. So I'll be running this resistor from the positive power rail. somewhere on the breadboard and there will do and if I use so from 
the positive 5 volts to the input of the LED. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I've got my uh, resistor coming from power, so 5 volts in through the resistor over to the uh, positive leg of this little yellow slash orange LED and into the uh, negative or the ground of this little circuit. So as you can see here, uh, and again the LED is not particularly bright, but you can see that it's lit. I might just stay a bit closer. So as you can see, the LED's lit. Uh, and it's only as bright as it currently is because I've got a 270 ohm resistor uh, limiting the amount of power going to the LED. But, yep, you can tell it's working. So if I actually now check for uh, resistance and or volts going between some of these points, I should get the same readings as what the iCircuit software was telling me. So we'll just have a look at that now. Uh, and as I can recall, have a quick look at the iCircuit software. So through my 270 ohm resistor, I was actually getting um, 3.187 volts and 11 milliamps. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So there you go, 3.194 or 192 volts going through the actual resistor. And that is very, very close to what the uh, simulation software was saying. So if we try uh, actual current, it says 11.8 milliamps on the software. I'll just connect this and run this in line. Okay, so what I've done is I've just swapped out uh, my old multimeter for this uh, cheap little one that I've integrated into this power supply back in episode one. Um, and I've hooked it up in uh, series and obviously you can see uh, the LED is lit. So, not lit, lit. And we are getting 11.39 uh, milliamps going through this circuit. The simulation software said that we would be getting 11.39 eight milliamps. Uh, I would actually give the benefit of the doubt to the simulation software uh, as opposed to this uh, cheap little four dollar multimeter but I've blown a fuse in the other one and this one will have to do. So there you go we are actually getting almost the same as what the simulation software says as we test the uh, the uh, current going through this circuit. Okay, so there you go. A quick look at the iCircuit software, a nice and convenient way to simulate some of the circuits that you might want to start building without actually having to be at your uh, bench and uh, taking the time to pull components together. Uh, a handy little piece of software. I do use it myself. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you'll join me next week.